Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the KMB Music Den. I am Keith. I'm Brad. And here we go, buddy. Oh, another one. Top 10 albums of the year 2022. What a year it's been. Wow. Wow, we could almost do a top 10 Ryan Adams <laughs> albums of 2022. Yeah, there's, there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of different things like that. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and oh, geez. But I tell you what, um,. How how tough was this for you putting this list together? This was tough. This was tough because you have to not only notice the things that have come out recently. Yeah. But you got to think all the way back to January and February. Yeah. And that's where it was hard. So. And I assume you ranked them ten to one. I did. Okay. Yep. Good. Good. So did I. <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna give you the honors of going first. Okay. And folks, you know how this works. Just ten through one. Our top. Our favorite albums, yeah. our personal, our favorite. personal top ten, yeah, yeah, of of this year, and okay. like like you said, what a year it's been. So let's get right to it. Number ten for you, Brad. What's Number be? ten for me. I have to look at my phone because I had to yeah. put them in and rank them and move them around. And well, he says this almost ass. every video. Did you know that? Well, he makes lists. I use phones. I I don't know. Yeah. Number ten, Jack White, Entering Heaven Alive. Oh, great! This call. is one we actually reviewed. Yeah. Together. Yeah. Great album. Um, he put out two, I think, were both in this year. Fear of the Dawn was also yeah. this year, yeah. Earlier. This was the one for me that was the better of the two. Yeah, I remember you saying that. I think the contention is, I think more people think the other one was better. But for me, I like the stripped down approach. So for me, this one really stuck out. So number 10. Well, yeah, you know, and I, I was one of those people that preferred Fear of the okay. Dawn initially. But I got to tell you, it's almost a tie at this it's point so for me after, after repeat listens on both. I agree. But he gave us two tremendous albums <laughs> this, this year. 2022, the year geez, of just... I'm telling you, I'm hoping 2023 is the same. <laughs> um, so Jack White. Yeah, great choice. Jack White. Entering Heaven Alive. Excuse me. Now, technically, mm -hmm. he could have another Jack White in his top 10, Fear of the Dawn. But he did say he liked this one uh, better. It's not so... there. I'm pretty... It's already oh, a yeah. spoiler. I doubt it. Yep, not there. So my number 10, I think, is going to surprise you. Okay. Not as much as my number 8, which we'll get to. Um, my number 10 is an album called The Art of Survival. Oh, Do you Bush. know that's by? Yeah. I love this album. Okay. I was upset we didn't review it. So. Yes. Okay. okay. It snuck into my top 10. Yep. I, lo I love Bush from the beginning, mm -hmm. 16 Stone, Razorblade Suitcase, Golden State. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the early albums are fantastic. You know, Bush is one of those bands where... Over time, it ends up being, you know, you see them perform on a, like a late night show or something for their yeah. latest song on the new album. And the only fucking person you recognize is the singer. Gavin, yeah. Gavin. It. And it's just like the a rotating. But I tell you what, uh, these are some of the best songs he's written in a in very a long, long time. long time, yes. Just, oh man, the guitars yep. are great. Yeah, and again, it comes down to the songwriting, mm -hmm. which seems like an obvious dumb thing to say, but it's true. It's um, so good. But I was really, really impressed by this. Um, and it snuck into my uh, top 10. So at number 10, The Art of Survival by Bush. Perfect, because it's not in my top 10, and I kind of wish it was. Now, kind of an honorable mention. It was a, such yeah. a good album that I'm yeah. glad it's getting some talk, because yeah. it's one I've listened to a few times now. Yeah. My number nine now, we're moving on to number nine. Number nine. Okay, I got to prep for this one. It's hard. Oh. This one's hard. Okay, you ready? All right, ready. It's from a band called American Aquarium. Oh, yeah. And the name of the album is Chica Kamokako. Oh, man, let me try this again. <laughs> <laughs> Chica Mokokoko. I don't know. That's Can I you, help you? Try, try. Can I try to help you? Uh, wait. Chica Kamamoko? I it's Chi <laughs> Chica Mo Chica Mokomiko. Chica Mokomiko. That I mean that's what the letters say. Don't worry about how to say it. It's a yeah. great album. Yeah. The album itself is fantastic. Yeah. American Aquarium put out a great album the year prior with uh what was the name of that album? I don't know. You're uh, more in tune with them than I am. The Lamentations. They're, they're a great band. Yeah, everything they put out is amazing. So I really enjoyed that and thought, let's add that in there. And I can't wait to say this name of the, the album. So <laughs> there you go. Wow, that was <laughs> that was rough sale. Oh, man. <laughs> and that was him practicing so oh, tried before he got yeah, here. Yeah, I tried to sound it out. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, it's all about the music. It is, right? Great. Yeah, they're a great band. Mm -hmm. I need to actually get a little more yeah. well-versed in them. Um, so that'll be on my radar. Um, okay, my number nine. I think you're gonna be like, oh, <laughs> um, is an album called The Misfit. Do you remember who put out this album this year? Put you on the spot. Why does this sound familiar? We talked a little bit about it. I think we talked about maybe reviewing it. This wasn't. Uh, oh, we didn't. I don't think we reviewed. This it. wasn't the guy from the old ninety seven. Yes, it? it is. All right, all right. Rhett Miller. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I man, I tell you. Uh, his old 97 stuff is great. His mm -hmm. solo stuff is great. 
This may be his finest solo album. Really? Yeah, I mean, it is just... I'll tell you, I haven't listened to it. And I want to. It's just with all the stuff that yeah. we never got through. Check it out, man. Okay. The melodies, the lyrics. I mean, uh, the variety in the songs. Mm -hmm. So strong. I'm, I'm so happy to put this on my list. Um, Rhett Miller, the lead singer of the old 97s, uh, for those of you who don't know, you know, has solo albums too, mm -hmm. a bunch. Um, and this is, this is definitely in the top 10 for me this year at number nine, in fact, and it's called The Misfit by Rhett Miller. Over to you, number eight. Very cool. Number eight Hopefully is actually, much easier to pronounce. Yeah, much easier. <laughs> this is actually an album that me and you did review this year. Okay. And to me, this is one that has stuck out to me the most as far as just unique and never hearing anything quite like it. Do you know what I might be going with here? Well, I have two guesses. Okay, two, okay. But I'll put my top guess first. Okay. Chin. No. 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 How about Andrew Combs? No. Okay, then I'm out. This is Placebo, Never oh, Let Me Go. okay. This album I put on, and it really just caught my attention. I mean, just the soundscape, the vocals, the lyrics. I had never heard anything. Like, I never listened to Placebo prior to it. So I had him listen to it, re reviewed it. I think pretty favorable review on both oh, ends. Yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, took me by surprise. Yeah. When I went back and was going through the, the year, that one, I was like, I got to put that in because that's a highlight for me for the year. Yeah, and you know, it's a quick side note. I mm -hmm. assume you did the same thing. I looked through what we reviewed. It's part of that, yeah. And then obviously looked mm -hmm. at lists and things like yeah, that absolutely. too. So. And I didn't want it, my top 10 to end up being. All the things we reviewed. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I agree. Like, just shuffle them around. That's going to be boring. Because they weren't all in the top 10. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, yeah. that's true. That's true. Um, so placebo is your number eight? Eight. Okay. My number eight. Mm. Here's the major curveball of the entire list for me. Oh, shit. This singer-songwriter is a very talented female. Mm. She's actually from our area. And she put out an album this year called Scared of the Sun. And her name is Hadassah Edith. <laughs> you may not be familiar with her. Her voice is absolutely spectacular. Her writing is spectacular. And a shout out to my good friend, Mike Newman, who uh, co-produced the album. I believe he played bass on it as well. Um, they did a special, they did had some songs on like WITF. They okay. did highlight yeah. musicians. Yep. Um, and you know, this album stands up with this whole list. I mean, it, it, you know, everybody's like, oh, a local artist. Well, <laughs> everybody's local to somewhere. Yeah. Um, and she... If, hmm. there, if there were more fairness in the world, she would be a national artist, and she very well may end up being a national artist. Yeah. Um, absolutely incredible. Uh, great person. I, I spoke to Mike on the phone recently. We were catching up, um, and he said it, he's, she's so great to work with. Um, I'm looking forward to going out and seeing her live. We should yeah. check her out. It's just yeah, it's been so crazy this year and everything. Yeah, no and, kidding. Um, but yeah, I uh, really want to highlight Hadassah Edith. And the album's called Scared of the Sun. It's on all major streaming services and everything. I'm sure she has a website, too. So check her out. That might be the surprise of the whole list right oh, there. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I can't yeah. imagine. That's like, <laughs> that's like when the Vikings drafts went in the second round. are like, who the fuck's that guy from Young Town State? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a surprise draft pick. My number right. eight. So number seven. We're up to seven now. Yeah. I'm going with a, 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 some, a band that's been in the game for a while. Yeah. And I think they've kind of resurged with this album. Or, or at least the singer I did. Because I, I, this felt like a very solo album to me. Wilco, Cruel Country. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Such a good album. And it felt like a Jeff Tweedy. Kind of, this was Jeff Tweedy's comeback to me. Because I felt like after the Bennett years, Tweedy's, the excitement in the band, it just fizzled for me. Yeah. I put this on just as a, hey, Wilco's got a new album. Let's listen to it. And was blown away. It was a great album. Yeah, it is a great album. It's, yeah. like, it's a massive album. Oh, it's like man. 20 songs or something. And every single one is fantastic. So, Yeah. <laughs> That's your number what? Seven. Seven. Yeah. It's already happening, folks. I knew this was going to happen. Oh, no. He, no, no. He was going to highlight albums that I completely Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say about. you had him at seven. I was like, oh, No, man. I, you know, I, how could I not have that Wilco album on my list? I, oh. I don't know. I, I guess I, yeah, I dropped the ball. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I good. dropped the ball. It's, it's going to happen. It should be in the top ten yeah. on, on all of our lists, to be honest with it's you. It's a fantastic saying. record. I dropped the mm -hmm. ball. So, what am I, that's seven? Yep. Okay, so my number seven is something that I just guessed recently for you that I thought you would put on that you said was very unique and, and all that. Mm -hmm. um, it's an album called Sundays oh. by Andrew Combs. Yeah. Uh, talk about underrated singer-songwriter. He, he has a solid career, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong, but my goodness, this guy, and this may be this may be his best album he's it, ever done. I, would, I... I mean, it's close with like a couple of those early yeah. ones are fantastic, too. 
This is a different style though. Mm -hmm. It's it's a little less of the country-ish Americana alt country mm -hmm. sound and a little more, oh, gosh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just a very intimate album. It's yeah. just very uh, trip back and just. The songwriting, mm -hmm. and, and again, I always say the same things, but God, his voice. I mean. It's good, yeah. Wow. And we had the chance to see him. Oh yeah. Um, open for Langhorn Slim Langhorn, years ago. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, several mm -hmm. albums ago. Yeah, um, that was great. Yeah, so Andrew Combs, um, and actually, if, if you see this, Andrew, I know he ended up seeing <laughs> our review that we did, and he sent me an email. Oh, he did? Yeah, oh, okay. um, so, and he was like, hey, thanks, and, um, oh, and he he loved your comment about the Fabergé egg. Oh, well, that's what album. that album is, man. It's Fabergé egg, and he said, oh, that's Don't cool. breathe when you're listening to it. It's yeah, so fragile, yeah. It's, oh, intimate is another. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's describing my choice better than me. <laughs> uh, but number seven for me, please check this out. A great album called Sundays, not Wednesdays, yeah. by Andrew Combs. Yeah. So you're up to number six, buddy. All right, number six. Here we go again. I got to practice this again. Oh, another really damn hard album. I don't know why I like the albums where it's like. I know. Let's see if you can you can say this. Yeah. Now the band is. I've I've mentioned this band before. And I don't think you've ever still listened to them. Porridge Radio. Say it again. Porridge Radio. I've heard the name. But okay. Yeah, I'm not familiar. Again, this is a female fronted band. Okay. Another fantastic album after last year's fantastic album. And it's called. Who? Here we go. Diving board, water slide, ladder to the sky. At least those are words. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I can pronounce it. It's just a tongue twister. Yeah, yeah. And who knows if I got it in the right order. But, <laughs> again, <Look it> up. <laughs> that, that band just continues to put out fantastic material time oh, after sure, time. Yeah. I remember you talking about them. Yeah. yeah, you can't. You put on the album, just relax, and it's just a, just a great listen. So, cool. again, making it by 20, I think they made my 2021, 20, too. So, yeah, before we, we had a channel, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yep. wow. Okay, you're big yep. on them. Two years in a row. Cool. Um, all right. Well, my number six is an album that we did review for the channel. Okay, here we go. That I really loved. Um, this band is the only band that can come close to and even really surpass the quantity quality output of someone like Ryan Adams. This is an oh, album okay. called Changes. Yeah, I knew you were going to And it's by okay. King Gizzard and the Lizard <laughs> Wizard. <laughs> See, okay, well you got one now. I tell you what, they put out, oh my gosh. Well, they put out three albums almost within like weeks you know several weeks mm -hmm. span and or more earlier this year obviously i mean they are so prolific and they change styles and uh but it, but you can always tell it's them you yeah. know that kind of thing um this album uh, i gotta find it on vinyl it sounds so good on vinyl um oh and that's another thing i forgot to mention about this whole list i am so <laughs> upset that there are only going to end up being two of these albums in my top 10 that i can show the mm. physical format of because i just Gosh, you know, I'm not made of money, so... It's been an expensive year. Yeah, so, it, ha it has, yeah. Inflation's real, guys. Thank God for unlimited Apple Music <laughs> on my planner. We have to yeah. shut this channel down. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's a great album. Check out all their stuff, especially from this year. They're just they're just on a roll. Um, but th this this has elements of jazz and um, just, wow. It's fantastic. Really great. Probably one of the top three fan bases, too. Yeah. I went on their, face, their fan book, uh, fan page for these guys and said, hey, that was a great album. I don't know much about them. Where should I go next? These guys created diagrams yeah. on yeah. how to yeah. find which album go next. I was like, that's impressive. We had a lot of people reaching out to us like, hey, great yeah. review. And if yeah. you're new, check this out, then check this out. And yes. That's so cool. That man. is amazing. That's what this is all about. Yep. So, uh, so yeah, number six, uh, Changes by King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. I always all make right. sure I say that right. Yeah, well, shit. Yeah. All right, now we're up to the top half, the top five of each of our lists. Yeah, and stop, ta uh, stop talking. Start talking about yours real quick because I realize that I do need to grab my two physical format ones. So just talk about yours for He's a second. He's actually using the restroom, guys. No, 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 no. That's what's happening here. That would be out this way. <laughs> <laughs> so number five is an album that we basically, when we first started the idea of what's going to be our 2022 albums, started getting kicked around a lot as one that might be on the top one or two. But after time, it slowed down to number five for me. And again, tongue twister time. Dawes, Misadventures of a Doom, Doom Scroller. Scroller. Okay. <laughs> Slip down to five. Yeah, five for me now. Oh, um, I'm guessing this will be high on your list. Explain. Um, it's a great album. I mean, yeah. if you're the fifth best album of a, in a year, that's a fantastic spot. True, true. There's just a couple of albums I think were better. So, four, four actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So again, this was a fantastic what seven tracks? Uh, Should be just six, I think. Six and a oh, because that bonus. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, every single one was fantastic it's and such a such a cool left turn for yeah. them stylistically. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Steely Dan on steroids, kind of. Exactly. <laughs> With Taylor Goldsmith yes. fronting. Yeah. Yeah, what a great album. Yeah, yep. I, you might hear more about that album later. So, <laughs> my 
My number five. Mm, number mm, five for what dogs. Could it be? I'm still I'm still wrapping my head around you putting it. I'm I'm anxious to see what's coming up. Uh -oh. So my number five is going to be one of the two that I mentioned that I can show the physical format. Okay. That I just found this album, uh, you know, on the shelf when I was at a store. And I was like, ah, I got to get it. So this one is another one that kind of took me by surprise this year. A band that I had limited knowledge of and thought were really cool. But then this album was just like, oh. So my number five is an album called Being Funny in a Foreign Language. Oh. And this is by the 1975. He does love this album. There's my wax. Don't mean to cover mm -hmm. your face up like I always do. but Good move. <laughs> uh, this is a clear vinyl, by the way. It's beautiful. Um, folks, uh, check this out. Great band. Mm -hmm. Um, if you only check out one song to see, hey, would I dig this? It has some, you know, upbeat stuff and some slower stuff. It has a good, nice mix of that. The song I would recommend is called All I Need to Hear on side B of this. If you're only going to check out one song and see if you want to dig further, check it out. If that doesn't, song doesn't draw you in, it's just not for you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, terrific band. Um, kind of snuck up on me, like I said, but my top five starts with this at number five is the 1975 with being funny in a foreign language. Pretty cool album cover, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, buddy. Great number four. And that one's getting a lot of uh, attention. Yeah. It's, it's critically acclaimed. So, I mean, that's... A lot of buzz. Yeah, you, you got yeah. a good pick there. Thank you. Number four. So, he said, what could be better than Dawes? Yeah, what could be? He's all upset. I don't think you're going to fight me on this one. All right. Andrew Combs, Sundays. Above Dawes. I think it is. After time... That album it's is hard so to hard. To, yeah. I mean, if, if I go 10 years from now and I want to go back and look at each one, I think the Andrew Combs one's going to stand out to me a little bit. Okay. Because it was such a unique, yeah, beautifully done. Like I said, I've never, I can't think of a record to this day where each instrument seems layered in intentionally so nice. Yes. So, I mean, yeah, the production and yeah. the mixing on that album. So, for me, another. and I think that's our first double, ain't it? I think. Is that the so, first one yeah. we both have? Yeah, okay. So far. So, <laughs> so far, <laughs> Andrew Combs, Sundays. <laughs> Wow, okay, yeah. number four. Number four I'm, for me. I'm happy to hear that, okay. actually, yeah. Uh, now, this is one I actually put on my... I think I put it on my Christmas list, so we'll see if I get oh. it just just too late for this video, of course. Um, Santa didn't arrive yet. But my number four is, again, a band that I had heard of, had listened to their earlier stuff before their release for this year, thought, great band, you know, mm -hmm. cool band, you know, kind of a buzz around them. And uh, just never really fully dove in and just got obsessed. And then I heard the album they put up this year. And you want to talk about obsessed. My number four is an album called Orange Blood by the band Mount Joy. Mm, okay. Wow. Wow. What an album. <laughs> what a terrific album. I mean, there's this, in particular, there's two or three songs on there that just absolutely blow my mind. Um as I may have mentioned before on the channel, or if this is the first video you're watching mm -hmm. of us, please subscribe. <laughs> um, I'm a songwriter, and it all comes down to that for me, which again seems like, well, of course it's about the songs, but man, uh, what a great singer, great songwriter. Mm -hmm. I just, uh, real, really great cohesive band. They have, they know what they, they know what they sound like, they know what they want to sound like. Um, not that everything they does sounds the same at all, that's not what I'm saying, but they are just dialed in. They are dialed in, and this album is a, a crowning achievement for them. And hopefully, it's just going to keep going up. I think. Uh, but check it out if you're not familiar. What a what a fantastic group! Uh, Orange Blood is the name of the album by Mount Joy. That's my number four. Very cool. So now we're into the top, top three. three. Here we this go. Is the bronze, silver, and gold medal. Yeah. For the year. Bring me your bronze. So here comes my bronze, and this one's not a surprise. I don't think. Okay. Ryan Adams, Romeo and Julia. Okay. I, that's one just kept growing, kept growing, kept yeah. growing throughout the year. When I first heard it. To me, it was a, it was more a collection of songs, uh, here you go. And Keith kept saying, look, this is a fucking fantastic album, <laughs> whether it's a collection or not. And he's right. The more and more I listen to it, it's one stud after another. I mean, Demolition was uh, a collection of songs, It wasn't was, it? yeah. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, this stands up in Ryan's, Ryan's, you know, discography high to me now. So, number three. Romeo and Julia. Dude, and I always come back. There's a few songs in there I always come back to that are just like... Raining in L.A. Yeah, and uh, In the Meadow. Uh -huh. And at, at Home with the Animals. You yep. always remind me of that yep. one. And that I, man, it, it's, uh, this is top tier yeah, Ryan Adams stuff. So, okay, well. All right, let's see if we hear more about that one, too. <laughs> okay. um, but my number three may be a bit of a surprise. Hmm. Unless you watched our video where I asked the question... Is this song the best song of the year? 
Wow. So my number three is the album. Wow. Burn the Empire by the Jeez, Snuts. Jeez, okay. Holy crap. All right. This band, and I will, folks, I will tell you, I don't know if I mentioned it in the other video, but I will, I think I did. I literally discovered this band just by looking at the list of albums that came out that one Friday. <laughs> and there was not much I recognized, not much I was looking forward to. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of a light week. Literally just off the album cover looked cool. And I thought the name of the band sounded, yeah. I'm like, that's a little interesting, the Snuts. Yeah. Um, uh, and I, I think they're from Australia and I put that on and that first song, Burn the Empire. That is great. Yeah. I was like, have I heard a better song all year? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. But then I listened to the whole album and <sighs> yeah. Wow. Yep. These guys, I mean, you know, you get your bands that end up being these buzz bands over the years, like Arctic Monkeys mm -hmm. when they first put out their first album. Yeah, that's kind of what this reminded me of too. Yeah, yeah. and it's like they deserve mm -hmm. to be that global holy shit band <laughs> off I, of this album. I don't, I don't disagree. They really no. do. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you may have not heard of this because I had, um, but my God, please check it out. The Snuts and the album's called Burn the Empire. That's my number three. Check them out. Very cool. Very cool. Number two, number, Silver Metal. Number two, the Silver Metal. <laughs> It's going to go to a, and I'm curious to see if this is on your list because okay. we discussed this and said this could be the best album of the year. And after a whole year, this was early in the year, it is still held top three. Spoon, Lucifer on the Sofa. And he forgot this album. Holy yes. shit. Oh, I forgot a, about this album. <laughs> and how good is it? Oh, oh. it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, oh, Britt Daniel, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm not. That, top two for me. <laughs> That album... Chop the ball again. Whew. Chop the ball again. If you, if the year got by and you missed it when it first came out, put it on. It's it's so good. It's so good, yeah. That's another one I'd love to have on vinyl. Yep. Absolutely. Holy crap, I missed that one. Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> See, that's I think two lists. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shit, okay. Yep. Well, yeah, what more can you say? Spoon's a great band. Mm -hmm. um, well, let me ask you this. Do you think you like the new album lucifer on the sofa by spoon more than their album ga 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 yeah oh yeah wow oh yeah not even close oh it's yeah. way close for me it's for not me. for me it's not it's very close for me and this, I... when, when this one came out to me it was just a renaissance it was brand new it sounded great yeah i was surprised they were coming out with something that fresh at this point yeah i, I can't put it above okay. ga, 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 ga at this point but i do need to revisit it some okay. more clearly yeah i dropped off my list like an idiot Okay, so here's where we start getting into where we have the same albums on our list, just in different orders. Okay. Because my number two is Romeo and Juliet by Ryan Adams. Yeah. Um, it's so good. God, it's, it's, hard. it's, it's so good. Yeah. I mean, he put out so many great albums just, mm -hmm. this, just this year. Um, but this one, it just, it, it just rises above. It... The song again, the songs, and there's what seventeen songs? Oh yeah, Maybe eighteen with the bonus it's... track. But gosh, I mean, you got all kinds of songs. You got roller coaster, mm -hmm. got in the blue, blue, blue of the night. Oh, and then, and then I said rain in L.A. I think is one of the best songs he's you ever could written. Do this for every song. Yeah, I mean every song is. But yeah. I, I, I always go back to yep. rain in L.A. That's one oh, of the best songs beautiful. I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Um. Gosh, the fact that, the fact that a song like that exists mm -hmm. and is not like in the mainstream like yeah. in the populace of of our consciousness this year is just such a crime yeah i agree but uh there it is romeo and juliet <laughs> by <laughs> ryan adams so we're to the gold medals now here it is we're each handing out our gold medal our favorite albums of <laughs> this year it all comes down to oh, number one here it is brad give it to the people all right so once in a while you find a new artist that you don't know and it changes your catalog a lot yeah i remember what was it, 1999, when Keith first introduced me to Ryan Adams and created a huge thing for me, where at that point he already had three albums. I think he had Heartbreaker, Gold. And Demolition. And Demolition. Well, on the Whiskey Town stuff. Yeah. Found, yeah. And then, of course, I got to go back and enjoy the back catalog and then listen to everything that came out after. Yeah. Well, I found a new guy this year that did the same thing for me, where I got to jump backwards in the catalog, and now I'm excited to hear things coming out. And that's Arlo McKinley. I've told him about this. Yes. This mess we're in. Absolutely. I mean, it's... That's your number one. Oh, I've listened to that song. You know how they do those Spotify raps or whatever? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this thing blew all my other albums mm -hmm. out of the water. Mm -hmm. I listened to this on repeat so much. Wow. Yeah, this was my number one listen to album of the year. And I mean, wow. this, yeah, I mean, it's... Kudos to you, man. I got to yeah. listen to it more because I listened to it when you told oh, me you? about okay. it and I enjoyed it, but I just didn't dive in like you okay. did. 
Um, wow. Yeah, I then went That's backwards, huge... listened to his Die Midwestern album, The Lonesome Sound. I mean, everything he's put out is just incredible. So That's a huge yeah. endorsement for a, like, not a household yeah. name guy. Yep. That was my so, favorite album that came out this year. Yeah. Wow. Yep. That, I did not see that coming. <laughs> um, oh, uh, sorry, I felt like I, oh, I do. Here it comes. Oh, I was going to sneeze. But, <laughs> I don't know what was coming. I was getting nervous. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how I like I like mentally like made that sneeze go away. Oh my god! Because we're filming, I'm proud wow. of myself. That's impressive. And watch me sneeze in like ten seconds. <laughs> but anyway, so I think you, my friend, who knows me so well, has a pretty good idea what's number one and what album I have not discussed yet in my top ten. It's gotta be Dolls. Yeah. Well, it doesn't have to be, but it is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I, folks, uh, I'm such a huge Dolls fan, and we talked about mm -hmm. this when we reviewed the album. Their previous two albums, uh, Good Luck With Whatever and Passwords, yeah. um, were okay. I, I, yeah, I, I mean, was not... Something was missing. There were, there were too many skippable songs, in my opinion, on those last two Dawes albums before this one. Mm -hmm. Again, a skippable Dawes song is better than most band songs. Oh, yeah. But when they put this bad boy out... I remember when they put that video out of them playing oh, yeah. it before they released mm -hmm. the actual album... The, <laughs> I feel like I'm back in that video that we did yeah. where I just was speechless. And, and as I said in that video, which is not good for a music review channel to be speechless, but this album, even if you don't really know this band, you've just heard the name, I don't know what they do. Um, you might as well even just start with this one, just because yeah, uh, this is what they're doing right now. The only know? thing that hurt this album for me, like I said, this was top five for me. Yeah. And it's basically the length of an EP. Yeah. That's the thing that hurt it for me, is it's it was top five. But I, it's an EP. I mean, to me, it's an EP. Honestly, I wrestled with that mm -hmm. with the Ryan Adams to see which would be number one yeah. and number two, because, he, you know, Romeo and Juliet has like 17, 18 songs. This has seven. Yeah, exactly. And one's like a, a, an interlude, basically. Yep. But, gosh, there's something about, this is like, to me, this is like one of those old um, classic prog albums mm -hmm. in the sense that it's got like an overriding theme, and it's just like, it's almost like yeah. one long piece of music in, in a way, but you can still pull the songs out and they'll be great. Mm -hmm. um, Taylor and the boys, man, kudos. Uh, I predicted that I wouldn't find an album that would beat this and I ended up being right um, for me, for my list. So number yep. one, Misadventures of a Doom Scroller by the Mighty Mighty Dawes. There you go. So any uh, surprises? Well, your I mean, number one surprised me. Well, well I mean, it didn't I, surprise me after I heard the album. I knew it, it was going to be there. It didn't surprise me. I know how big you are on yeah. that guy. It didn't surprise yeah. me it was on your list. It surprised me that it was number one. I just had to go. When I sat back and looked and realized I played it more than any other album this yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, I definitely. played his other albums an increasing amount. I went out and got the vinyls. I mean, yeah. I mean, to me, this was my... If I look back at 2022, there's two or three albums that I'm going to remember well. And this was going to be one because... I'm going to be listening to this guy constantly going forward. Now, did, did you discover him this year? This year. Okay, that's yep. a big part of it, too, yep. which I understand. Absolutely. So, yeah, I, I mean, I'm glad. There's albums that I just totally dropped the ball on, the Wilco and Spoon. Spoon, that I'm, I'm, I'm shocked you missed. Yeah. God, I'm, did I miss that. Because we loved that when that came out. But it was early. It was early. I missed it. Yep. I, I missed it. I'll admit it. So. Would, now, would you have, looking at your list now, would you have slotted it in there if with where it's at? Yeah, I mean, I would have I would have slotted it in... Um, might have taken Rhett Miller off okay. to make room, uh, even though that was my number nine, not my number ten. But um, I mean, I like my list. I like that you have Bush. List. I gotta be honest. I like yeah. that you have Bush because I kept wanting to bring up Bush. It was too late to review it because yeah. we missed it and it went a couple of weeks. But when it came out, I said, "Holy shit, Gavin <laughs> put out a great album." Yeah. So I'm glad it's on the list because it deserves recognition. Yeah, it really. Yep. I I listened to it a lot. Yeah, yep. more than I thought I was going to. Yep. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, there it is, folks. Now, you know what we say, and not all of you are doing it, <laughs> but we always say, drop your top ten albums mm -hmm. of this year. You guys are going to put stuff on there that we've probably never heard of some of them, yeah. and we'll get, give us a chance to explore different music that mm -hmm. we missed. Um, th that's why we do this. So, please, please, drop it in the comments. Um, and as we always say, please like this video, share it on social media, subscribe to the channel, smash the bell for notifications. 2022 holy crap what a great year um anything coming that you've been hearing about coming next year is the cure album gonna, finally gonna come out who knows is that cure album finally gonna come out folks is it what called chinese democracy is that the name <laughs> of the cure album? <laughs> 
Oh no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, the sequel. Um, oh. I really do. From now that they're touring and they're mm-hmm. playing new songs off of the album, I actually do think it is going to finally come out. Okay. Uh, this this coming year, twenty twenty three, uh, better be a damn double album after all this rating. <laughs> Uh, but I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, obviously we're going to be keeping a close eye on what Ryan does next year. I'm sure there's um, going to be a lot of that, too, yeah. Wasn't there talk of maybe there's, like, a Cardinals album? Let's hope. Like, I mean, that'd be nice. I know he was hanging out with, with Pemberton, wasn't mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, let's let's see how that all that goes. But, yeah. um, so, yeah, we're <laughs> so thrilled to be doing this. Um, we're well over 10,000 views yep. now, by the way, so thanks to all of you for all the support. Uh, spread the word um and again please let us know i'd really like to know what i missed uh this year so please put it in the comments your Mm. top 10 favorite albums are just as important as ours we just happen to have a channel (laughs) um so for brad i'm keith this is the KMB music den we're gonna be we got a lot of great ideas for next year for new content and to uh do some you know more episodes of content that has been doing well um like the song versus song thing Mm -hmm. we love so um to keep an eye out for that and we will talk to you soon thank you so much have a safe happy holiday season and we will see you soon see you folks take care